Welcome to Guide to the Unknown. I'm Kristen. I'm William. And we are back to regale you with scary tales today, conspiracy theories. That's right. Yep. Yes. Digging into the world of tinfoil hats Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't know, peeking around every corner. And keyboard warriors. Yeah. Yeah. Keyboard warriors. Yeah. Uh, Before we dig into our conspiracies, uh, I want to follow up on something that we started last week. Sweet. Okay. Okay. Uh, Last week we talked about- How's the Black Friday death toll going? The death toll, Kristen, I'm uh-huh. thrilled to report. Good. Yes. Last week, we talked about the website BlackFridayDeathCounts.com, where they track every death, every injury associated with Black Friday. Steady. Oh, good. The deaths have not gone up. Great. It's probably because it was one of the worst Black Fridays on record, right? Oh, is sales it? Sales-wise. Is it really? I think it was pretty, yeah, like not super high sales. Well, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that, too. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> Go down, you capitalist pigs. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I bought a bunch of stuff. <laughs> too much cyber monday i, I, I was really yeah, yeah, yeah uh and no one's dying on cyber monday right so uh uh We're last clickety week, clacking at home prior to black friday mm-hmm. the count was 10 deaths 105 injuries yeah Kristen, the only change we're still at 10 deaths okay cha-ching well done everybody yeah 111 injuries okay so what happened six guys we went yeah. up six we've got a brawl in alabama okay that hurt someone yeah we've got <laughs> one one person shot and one person stabbed at the Jesus. Willowbrook Mall. I don't know where, where that is. That? that rings a bell. Is it in New Jersey? It, it does ring a bell. Wasn't that the insane asylum on Staten Island? Willowbrook. Oh, maybe. Right? Maybe. Yeah. Cropsy like got Cropsy? them. Like Cropsy? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cropsy stabbed and shot a Yeah, couple. maybe that is what it is. There was a shooting in a Missouri mall. Uh-huh. The left, Galleria? I don't know. But it left one teen seriously injured. Don't oh, like that. God. And uh, <clears throat> a UK man, a man in the UK, got a shattered hip. After an altercation in a Kmart. Oh, no. That's probably an older gentleman then, <laughs> I right? I guess. Because, yeah. like, how hardcore could an altercation... Well, I guess it could be. You seldom hear really... about a young man with that's a shattered That's what I'm saying. Hip. Yeah, like, I guess if you get thrown down really hard or something. I guess I don't know. But yeah. that sounds like an older guy. If you're throwing down real hard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, I listed five injuries. Yeah. The count, the tally, right. there's claims six. there's six. I do not know where that mysterious sixth is. Yeah, it's a sprained pointer finger, like mom sprained her finger playing Candy Crush. Uh. <laughs> so it was an online shopper. Yeah. BlackFridayDeathCounts.com. Get your stuff together. Yeah. Journalistic integrity is the name of the game, okay? I need you to dot your I's and cross your T's. Please, we need some transparency here. If you couldn't find <clears throat> out what the sixth was, just tell us. Yes. We'll understand. Uh, now, of course, last week was Thanksgiving. Yeah. Gobble, nice gobble. Occasion. We were happy to acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. Kristen, this week, I'm happy to acknowledge something else. Yeah. A little holiday to takes place every year on November 30th. Yeah, the best holiday ever, bitch. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But no, it ain't one that everybody's celebrating. It should be. It's Chrissy's birthday. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As we record this, it's tomorrow. Yeah. Like f- three hours, three and a half hours until your birthday. Yeah. Uh, which you share. Yes. Of course, with our mm-hmm. uh, other sister, Lynn. Yep. Born on the same day. Isn't that crazy, day. guys? Born on the same day, 21 years apart, which is insane. Yeah, yeah totally. Uh, and so I thought to to honor the occasion, uh-huh. when people hear this, it will have been yesterday. Right. They, they, everybody already screwed up. They didn't get in touch with you for your birthday. They already or, messed that up. Or they, it, they partied so hard. It was such a big deal. They stayed home from work today. Right. And they're listening to the podcast in bed. They partied hard in yeah. your honor yeah. so much that they forgot to get in touch. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I, I looked up some stuff that happened on November 30th, historically. Oh, like Billy Idol being born? Uh, well, that's not what it was. It's stuff okay. like that. Okay. Uh, along those lines, uh, Michael Jackson released the album Thriller. Oh, sweet. On November 30th, 1982. I know I loved Thriller when I was a little kid. There you go. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why. There's a connection Maybe. there. Maybe. Now, this one I knew was going to blow your socks off. Okay. Uh, this is the day that... Something to do with like the cotton gin or something boring? It's the day that Exxon <laughs> and Mobile merged, becoming Exxon Mobile. Boy, howdy. Mm-hmm. Neat. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and then this. I was very happy to find one thing that yeah, I was like that was actually really cool. excited about. Yeah, Thriller's cool. Evidently, on November 30th, in Silacuga, Alabama, okay. the Hodges meteorite oh. crashed through a roof and hit a woman taking an afternoon nap. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is the only documented case in the Western Hemisphere of a human being hit by a rock from space. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. A little interstellar travel. So maybe. Hurtling through the cosmos. What year was this? Was this my actual birthday? I don't. I don't. Because maybe I'm like Superman. It's not not the year. 
It's not 1983. Okay. All right. Because yeah. I was the same I'm like Superman and that meteor brought me. Right. And mom and dad raised me under false pretenses all these years. Right. And that explains why I have all these powers. Well, we both saw Twin Peaks season three. There yeah. was an event uh-huh. that took place in the 50s that yeah. may have begat certain mysteries. That's true. This meteorite may have crashed and perhaps you were just some disgusting space right. goo. <laughs> right. S- slopping around Alabama making that your way. Took, you know, a number of years to <laughs> materialize into a person. <laughs> exactly. Who's to Find a host. I think it's likely. Me too. (laughs) So that's November 30th. Happy birthday, Chrissy. Thank you. Thank you for the present of those facts. That's awesome. Happy scary birthday. Ooh, thank you. Scary birthday. Happy scare day. Okay, so conspiracies. Yeah. (laughs) Birth scare. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. Yeah. You claim to already know what mine is. I think I do. Okay. Why don't we hear you say it? Okay. I think it's Paul is dead. No? No. Oh, okay. No. All right. It was going to be like, damn. Boy, you look at the egg on your face. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like Paul is dead slash Andrew WK switcheroo thing. You look so embarrassed. <laughs> you look humiliated. No, it is not. Uh, what no. is it? Don't look at my computer. Okay. Okay? Because I, I have a little story to tell you. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'll s- and you might start to put away. it together. Okay. okay? Okay. All right. Now pic- it's hard not to look at the computer. Okay. Picture this. I'm leaning in because my <laughs> headphones are far. Okay, go ahead. It's the early 20th century. Okay. It's World War I. Mm-hmm. Archduke Anton of Austria, just a teenager, Kristen. Okay. Discovered something fascinating. All right. Anton was considered one of the pioneers of radio. Mm-hmm. Fascinated with the stuff. Mm-hmm. He was permitted to build his own. Permitted? Permitted to build his own <laughs> radio tower. <laughs> Uh, he had a room full of equipment, and he was also well versed in Morse code. Okay. Archduke Anton of Austria was the first person to discover a mysterious radio broadcast which appeared to contain coded messages. Oh. Kristen, Archduke Anton of Austria uh-huh. is the man who discovered number stations. Okay, this is awesome. Number great. stations. Great, great, great. Kristen, what I'm way more excited to hear about this than Paul is dead. What do you know about number stations? I mean, just that there are radio stations that are just constantly sending out well, some some are sending out tones. Mm-hmm. Some are just people repeating numbers. Yeah. Over and over and over. Yes. It is so interesting. Yes. Uh, many people think out there think that it may be aliens trying uh-huh, to contact uh-huh. Earth just through the sound waves, these odd coded messages, yeah. odd tones. Yeah. Uh, some people think that it is uh, 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 drug smugglers uh-huh. trying to coordinate their plot. Yeah. Uh, some people think it's the government yeah. sending out secret messages that subconsciously screw with your brain. Yeah. Kristen, for those of the people... The government's really screwed up. Yeah, it is. It's very dark. There's a lot of dark stuff going on with the government. I definitely sure. have touched on a lot of dark government things in the last week or so. Oh, is that right? Yeah. It's mm. been really interesting. interesting. And also like... Well, these are dark days. Yikes. Yeah. But um, I mean, even older than, you know, we'll get to it, but like just forever, the yeah. government's very secretive and shady. Oh, it's true. And yeah. they probably should be. No, completely. But it's just, it's interesting. They've got some secret stuff to do. Yeah. That's for damn sure. Oh, for sure. Um, among some of the earliest forms of radio mm-hmm. transmission, number stations are short wave yeah. radio broadcasts, which typically use speech synthesis. Uh huh. Now, this is literally like if you took, you know, remember in like elementary school. If you had like a Mac, yeah, and you could type yeah, yeah, something yeah. in and it would speak speak back to you, like, yeah. be like I eat my own farts. <laughs> it was that. So th- those broadcasts yeah. just going nine, seventy eight, yeah, fifteen, two, um, <clears throat> to vocalize a seemingly random set of numbers. Uh-huh. Sometimes these stations broadcast on regular schedules. Sometimes seemingly at random. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you out there to put the final nail in the coffin. Probably the most popular uh, uh, portrayal of a number station is mm-hmm. from the show Lost. Mm-hmm. So if you're familiar yeah. with that voice going 4, 8, 15, yeah. 16, 23, 42. When I just did that before, did that give you pause at all or anything? Yes. Yeah. I almost <laughs> I almost quoted number station stuff back at you and then yeah. I realized I was going to out myself. Yeah. Before we started recording, I there was a reason. I remember I started doing the Lost numbers. Yeah. Uh, so that's what a number station is. Is. Right. I'm going to tell you a, bit, a little bit about how they work. Okay, cool. Uh, what they're used for, because there does appear to be 
concrete answers. Oh, great. And yeah, I don't know a lot about this. Like, I think it's really awesome. I know that I've read stuff about it online, but a couple years ago, I really don't remember. Yeah. The, Do you have anything about the Toynbee tiles in there? I don't. Okay. I'm leaving the Toynbee tiles. That's a story for another day. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. my best with this stuff because, like, there's so much crossover in oh, things. Oh, completely. And I should say, I did not come up with any crossover between number stations and the Toynbee tiles okay. in this. But, like, any time that I'm doing research for mm. a topic for this show, mm-hmm. if it starts to cross into another potential topic, yeah. I abandon that. Yeah. So, for people listening out there, if it becomes maddening that we didn't bring up something obvious, it's yeah, probably because we're... Yeah, it's probably on purpose. We're probably saving it for So we can talk show. about it for, for, as its own subject. Yeah. So, um, I also have a few... I picked a few choice number station uh-huh. uh, broadcasts uh-huh. for us to listen to oh, as cool. well. Oh, cool. Sweet. Yeah. So, do you want to maybe, like, uh, chuck one out before I start to tell you about how they're operated? Maybe it would be good, too, because we can... Oh, put play a number station yeah. thing? Yeah, sure, Maybe sure. good, too, because I could really display to people out there... Like, what it is. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Uh, I'm going to play for you guys uh, really the most popular one. This okay. is the one that came up constantly in my research... Every time that I was looking up something okay. about a number station, the article tended to reference this. Oh my the God, Lincolnshire so Poacher. Okay. This is the name of the station. Uh, and we're going to listen to a few seconds of this. Cool. So really, five. imagine imagine yeah. that you're Three, screwing nine, around seven, with your radio, right. just trying to listen to stuff. Yeah, totally. Trying to listen to the Bee Gees or something. And then you come across that. Yeah, com- it's so weird. <clears throat> you hear a few beats of that. The mm-hmm. Lincolnshire Poacher, I believe, is a is a song, uh-huh. <clears throat> which is why the station is called that. You, you start to hear the song, but it's <laughs> that's, that's like it's played such, on a kid's instrument. That's such a a song name. I know the Lincolnshire Poacher, an old British <laughs> yeah. song. Yeah, completely. Yeah. And then you just hear this random set of numbers, yeah. and eventually just turns off. So cool what and you, so weird, so yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, put yourself also in the shoes of that guy from World War One, the Archduke of Austria. Oh yeah, you're just screwing around because you like radios uh-huh. and it's new technology, and you're a little rich kid. Yeah, I looked it up. How old was he? He would have been a teenager. He oh was born God. in like 1901, and World War One happened from like 1913 to 1918. Yeah, like that. Yeah, he was a teenager. Yeah, that's... and he discovers this crazy broadcast in Morse code. Yeah. So I should I should have maybe even explain what happened with him. Uh-huh. He would write down like 30 pages of information. Yeah. And then drop them off at the like radio office, uh-huh. like a war office in Austria every yeah. day and they would uh check the message to see if it made sense mm-hmm. and it always did. So he was like What do you mean? He was like decoding it? Yeah. That's which is crazy. awesome. Yeah. And the strangest part of it his name comes up a lot when you research number stations. Yeah. It's not part of his Wikipedia, though, himself. He later went on to fight in World War II. Uh-huh. And um, this is, like, such a funny example of having, like, a very American point of view. Yeah. I'm reading this stuff being like, oh, man, this guy was, like, a genius. Whoa, he fought in World War II? Yeah. He fought on the other side. I was about to ask you that. What side did he? Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, he, mm-hmm. was, he was part of the bad boys. Oh, boy. Yeah. All right. Well, so, uh, use his power for good and evil. Yeah, he he flew mm-hmm. as part of the German Werfenvlaster. <laughs> yeah. Something. I don't yeah. mean to be. Well. <laughs> uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Ignorant. <laughs> Look, we don't remember the name. But I am. Um, I mean, I have it written down. I could, yeah. I could click on my notes and read nah, it. Nah, 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 nah. Let's play some more tones. Too late now. Yeah. So he he was a Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, a day. I looked it up. <laughs> the second I Googled German Werfenlaster, which were pilots, yeah. just, just a Nazi uniform. That's like um, I bought, I wanted a, a nice lightweight jacket for this past fall. Yeah. And our town does a town-wide garage sale. And we went to this guy's place who sells, like, antiques in town and stuff like that. It was the, um, what's it called? Um, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, so, yeah, there's, like, kind of, like, green jacket that was, like, kind of army-ish, but, like, not not really. Army-ish in style. And he was, and uh, he you was, like, like, yeah, a that's. German nationalist uh, No, I coat. did buy it. Oh. He was, like, yeah, that's uh, an East German 
army jacket. And I was like, cool. And I bought it. And then like later that day, I was like, East German army, eh? Why don't I give this a Google? <laughs> Nazis. What you find? So you have a Nazi coat? Yeah. Kristen. <laughs> it's not like a Nazi officer's <laughs> coat, but it, it, these Germans were not good That's guys. That's not good. In no. these t- we should burn that coat. I know. I, I did wear it out before I – so it wasn't the same day. I had worn it out, and I think while I was out, I was like – it was like in my head, like East German army coat, yeah, East Germany. And I was like, should I not be wearing this right now? We should make this show take a hard left and we should be like burning Nazi uniforms yeah. on a live stream. I'm not against it. I'm not either. I guess I'll just donate it. I mean, the next person who gets it isn't going to know that it's an East German Nazi yeah, coat. Donate it to a, uh, a Nazi who's in need. <laughs> No, then it you're gonna look- saddle someone, some poor person who just needs the coat to get through the winter, and people are gonna be like, "I recognize that coat." <laughs> and they're gonna boom, set him on fire. I don't think it's recognizable as not that I know a history of Nazi coat. You know what? You're right. I'm not gonna I don't do know. that. That's that not a good that idea. That doesn't sound. Well, good. then why did that guy pass it on to me without thought? Well, he won't have any idea that I just donated to him a Nazi uniform. <laughs> well, why would that guy let me buy that thing? Because he's into history stuff. There's a guy in town who has like a. a, a a bunch of stuff. Yeah, like antiques and really cool stuff. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we we bought like a 60s, cool 60s. De- I should check to see if it's a Nazi death. Yeah, check it out. Maybe he's <laughs> or despair this guy. He's probably not. I'm just making a joke. He's <laughs> Maybe I'll like bleep his neo, name when you said it before. Nazi he's definitely selling us stuff. I'm going to go on the record. He's definitely a neo, <laughs> yeah. neo-Nazi. I'll bleep it. I'm gonna, just, I think I literally should bleep it. I think you now. should do. Okay. Just unwittingly <laughs> distributing like Nazi Or era. wittingly. Oh, that's what I meant. I didn't mean I'm It's like, kind of like yeah, Lucius yeah, yeah. Malfoy when he gives yeah. Voldemort's diary to people. <laughs> that's what I meant. That yeah. he that he's like on the slide distributing like Nazi era yeah. <laughs> antiques to well, all the people in town. If if he were a German spy, there was a decent chance that he would be tuning into number stations. Yeah. Uh, good segue back. Which yeah. is what they were for. It's crazy. Uh, it's confirmed, by yeah. the way. Yeah. No government owns up to it. Yeah. I should say that as well. Uh-huh. If you ask any government about a number station that appears to have been operated within their country, they will yeah. tell you that they we're not aware of that station. We have no information about it. Mm-hmm. Some of these stations have been in operation for decades. Yeah, that's so crazy. Yes. Uh, they were indeed used so that uh, uh, nations could mm-hmm. send coded messages out mm-hmm. for undercover spies to listen to yeah. and decode a message from. Oh, that's so cool. Crazier than that yeah. is something I had never thought of in the first place. Uh-huh. How do you decode that message? I really don't know. I mean, I understand. Not you hear I a few beats it. of the Lincolnshire poacher. <laughs> you know, you're like, so the most two common letters that go together are A and T or, you know, whatever. Like yeah, for, exactly. How do you figure that out via, via tone? I right. guess some people are just like, they have a good ear and they're musically minded. Well, what you do, Kristen, uh-huh. is you put your one time pad to use. Your one time pad? That's right. Your one time pad. What does that mean? Uh, a one time pad is a little booklet, uh-huh. typically. It can, it, oh, it can be many things. It literally, what the name one time pad refers to, yeah. is anything that you can build a coded message from uh-huh. and then later decode that message again from, which can be easily destroyed. One okay. time use. So they would have a page uh-huh. of this book, might have just like a bunch of random numbers. They create a message, Mm -hmm. like a written language, letters, from those numbers. Yeah. And then uh, uh, later on, they can broadcast that seemingly random set of numbers. Yeah. So that somebody out there in the field hears it Uh and can use their one-time pad to decode it. Once they have decoded it, they are to rip that piece of paper out of the book and destroy it. Wow. One time. Cool. One time use. Yeah. That is it. Wow. Uh, If you look up the one time use pad Uh page on Wikipedia, so much information about how it's done, the actual, like, uh, the process to convert it, it was over my head. It also seems like a lot of work that (laughs) then you only get to use one time, right? Yeah, but if you're a spy out in the field... <laughs> oh, compl- I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. You don't want to be fudging with this. No, but I'm just saying. It must be kind of like, oh, God, do I have to? I know. I gotta get rid of this. I guess I do, yeah. yeah. And they're they're typically also built so that they can be destroyed at a moment's notice wow. if you f- suspect that somebody's on to you. You can feed your one-time pad a cyanide tablet? <laughs> that yeah, can basically. just crush in its back teeth? Yeah, you yeah. just stab a basilisk fang into yeah. it, <laughs> and all the ink pours out. It takes care it's of fine. it. It's fine. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, they weren't only used for number stations, though. Uh-huh. A one-time pad, I found out, is not just a number station thing. Uh-huh. They were just used for encrypted messages, period. Yeah. A lot of the number station stuff seems like it may have evolved from sending de- uh, encrypted messages via uh-huh. telegraph. Uh-huh. So you would, you know, receive a, a, a basically in the mail. Yeah. I don't really know how telegraphs really worked. I guess you'd call over the message in Morse code and somebody goes like, yeah. here's a message for you. Yeah, and I it's guess. A, smattering of numbers yeah you could use your one-time pad for that as well but once number stations started being used the one-time pad was an obvious right fix for for how to decode the messages there wow yeah really crazy so cool really wild yeah um they have evolved over time Uh as well Uh apparently we have been making uh periodic improvements to the one-time pad they were originally uh the first ever mention of them was in 1882 Uh when a guy named Frank Miller, who was an American cryptographer, Uh which is an awesome job. Yeah, it is. uh, Fought in the Civil War. Union side, baby. Ooh, hey, hey. Got it. I know you. Uh, He described... Shut up, Frank. Yeah. He described using a one-time pad to decode telegraphs. Uh Uh-huh. Which is how I know that that was a thing. Yeah. And um, then they were updated in the 1920s. Uh Uh-huh. By German cryptographers, oh, mm-hmm, uh, who discovered they could create completely unbreakable codes by adding additional random numbers. Oh boy! The codes being sent by a uh, number station, yeah. are literally uncrackable unless you have like you the, have the code, the yeah. proper corresponding one time. Right? Wow! Yeah, as in like unless it's a station that was transmitting in Morse code that can just be converted to a sentence. Yeah, uncrackable. Wow. Don't even bother. Yeah. You're not going to get through. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, number stations broadcast all around the globe. Uh-huh. Uh, by which I mean if there's a number station that's broadcasting in Russia. Yeah. Because they use short wave frequency. Yeah. It bounces off the ionosphere. hmm And so it can start on one side of the globe and ping pong its way all around the globe. So amazing. Some of them are powerful enough that they can be heard in basements where spies need to be. Yeah. Through walls, no problem. So amazing. As long as you have a short wave radio yeah. that you're tuning into the right frequency, yeah. you're in. It's incredible. And right now, if anybody out there has a short wave radio, yeah. you can literally dial into number stations. Yeah. For uh for reasons of paranoia, uh-huh. I will not be directly linking to lists of active number stations, uh-huh. but it is the easiest Google search in the world. What do you think would potentially happen? I just don't like the idea. I feel like I'm already on a list just because I'm <laughs> at certain points during my research, because uh-huh. I, I was all over the place. Yeah. Dark I'm not, I feel like I'm not even... Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm a dark sleuth. Yeah. <laughs> a dark keyboard jockey. I feel like I uh, really went hard on this topic, uh-huh. and I'm not going to be able to talk about even, like, half of all the stuff I found just because yeah. it would be too much and probably yeah. be boring. Yeah. But um, I was Googling stuff like, you know, sending spy messages <laughs> in, a, in a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you yeah, know like, totally. I was, like yeah. just stuff that, like, some government robot just goes, yeah. like, eh, flag that. Flag computer 247. Flag computer 247. Yeah. yeah. And they won't get to ch- they won't even get around to checking it for 60 years. Right. But I just I just know. No, I got you. I just googling curious. some weird yeah. stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um <clears throat> so uh <laughs> oh, here's a quote about about being a spy and, and, okay. and doing this sort of work. Okay. If proper tradecraft was practiced, love the word tradecraft. I would say tradecraft, okay. Wonderful word. Yeah. Uh, if proper tradecraft was practiced and instructions were precisely followed, a one-way voice link transmission. Now that means radio. Oh, okay. I was okay. Go ahead. It's only one way. I don't uh, know why they call. Okay, it. okay, yeah. Because I, I don't was, know why they call. It, I yeah. was confused. I was like, I have to unpack all those words together. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, a one-way voice link transmission was considered unbreakable mm. as long as the agent's cover could justify possessing a shortwave radio. And he was not under technical surveillance. High frequency one way voice. Who link, wrote this? Some guy. <laughs> was uh, a secure and preferred system for the CIA during the Cold War. Wow. Now I'm thinking. Uh huh. 80s Cold War. Yeah. Right? And uh, you just need a cover for carrying around a, a big radio. Yeah, boombox. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're on the exact same page. Easy. Because I was picturing an undercover spy yeah. jamming down the road, listening to the Lincolnshire poacher. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> 
lay a base behind that and you're in business. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, just a young buck enjoying his day. Exactly. It's the ultimate cover. We feel fine about you, young man. <laughs> <laughs> We're not concerned at all. I'm not terrified of you. <laughs> and I know you're up to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> up to only good. Yeah. Uh, number stations today. Yeah. They are still being used. Yeah. Uh, some of them are still just running uh-huh. these old stations right, right. and have been running for decades. Right. And uh, apparently something pretty alarming <laughs> happened last year. What? So, do you know North Korea and how scary <laughs> do they I are? Do I know? No- yeah, I, yeah. You heard of uh-huh. this? Yeah. You heard, you heard you of this? You know about this? You heard of yeah. this? Apparently. Uma, Oprah? July okay. 2016. Uh-huh. South Koreans yeah. uh, discovered something startling. Okay. North Korea started using number stations for the first time in 16 years. Thinking about North Korea freaks me out so big time. It's I, like I learned some scary stuff. It's like part of my self-care not to learn too much about North Korea. You owe it to yourself not to. And yeah. I'm about to torture you. Oh, God. I don't have that much. Okay. All right. Some analysts just regard this as a form of psychological warfare. Uh Uh-huh. They're saying definitely, like, let's take this as an example of them trying to contact undercover North Korean spies out in the world. Mm -hmm. But also, we don't really know why they started using number stations again. Yeah. There are some uh, North Korean spies who were captured. Uh Uh-huh. Who have said that, like... They would do things like uh, a form of communication would be a regular radio station. Uh-huh. If they played a certain song at a certain time of day on a certain station, it meant something. Oh, my God. Yeah. But now it's literally a, a number That's station. That's both awesome and horrifying. I know. Um, where were the spies? Uh, I guess they were captured in South Korea. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, by the way, my source for this is the New York Times. Yeah. So this part's not conspiracy yeah. nonsense. Number stations as a whole mm-hmm. are just fodder for conspiracy yeah, theories. Yeah, things spin out from there, but they are things. They are yeah. actual things mm-hmm. that are in use. Right. So there was uh, a woman who was heard reading on the North Korean number station, the new one, which mm-hmm. is still broadcasting now. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> it's been described as a mathematics review assignment for investigative agent number 27, which sounds like, you know, nothing. It sounds like fake. I think that sounds kind of suspicious. Oh, no, that's what I mean. I'm <laughs> saying like it's not like that is anything that somebody would be like, oh, it's nothing. Yeah, it's just okay. a mathematics assignment. Yeah. Like that's not For a good agent cover. 27. Yeah. We got to teach uh, arithmetic to agent number 27. Oh, okay. What then a, everything's fine. Move on. What a weird combo of undercover and overt. Why yeah. say agent 27? I have no idea. Uh, she goes All on right, to well, say. That's a little bit comforting in a way because that's stupid. It is stupid. Uh, she goes on to say that this agent is engaged in a distance learning program. Oh, that's why it's over the radio. Oh, I get it. Of course. Uh, here's a quote. Turn to page 459, number 35. Page 3913. Kill them all. Number 55. Mm-hmm. Page 135, number 86. She cited numbers oh for god. 14 minutes. Oh, my God. Oh, just a math lesson. Yeah, I'm just a math boy. <laughs> NBD. Oh, my God. Yeah, who cares? WTF. I know. Uh, uh, terrifying. Yeah. Um, I have a quote here from someone. Yeah. So this is from a 1998 article. Remember I was saying that like governments deny uh-huh. knowledge of these stations? Yeah. This is a quote from a 1998 article in the Daily Telegraph. Okay. Quoting a spokesperson for the Department of Trade and Industry which regulates radio broadcasting in the United Kingdom. Uh Here's the quote. Uh These number stations, he didn't call them number stations, these reports, these whatevers, these number stations are what you suppose they are. People shouldn't be mystified by them. They're not for, shall we say, public consumption. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) so comforted. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. I know. I mean, that's pretty sweet. I love it. Yeah. It's wow. such a good government employee quote. Yeah. They're not for, shall we say... Public consumption. Public consumption. Wow. And that just doesn't break his gaze with you. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, like, oh, all right. <laughs> Message received. Um, I kind of appreciate him being so upfront about it. Yeah, he's being pretty forthright. Yeah. I guess that's something. Wow. Yeah. That's so crazy. I don't have a name so for it. It's him. one of those things where I'm just like, wow, how do we not talk about this all the time? That's nuts. Yeah. 
All right, I'm going to speed through a couple other things. Okay. okay? So um, one of the the ways that they refute the idea of it being used for illegal dr- drug trade uh-huh. is that if that were the case, yeah. they'd have to broadcast so infrequently and irregularly, and uh, it would be because they're afraid of having their position triangulated uh-huh. and having the station be found, whatever. Uh, okay. But most of these number stations broadcast consistently. Yeah constantly and their positions have been yeah. triangulated and it doesn't matter so uh how does it not matter what do you mean because nobody cares if you find them because the stations themselves don't mean oh, anything by oh, right, themselves a recording like going, if it were the drug like, trade it would be this like you know like pirate radio right. thing like they made that movie pirate radio yeah, with uh-huh. um Philip Seymour Hoffman. the scary guy yeah and he Philip Seymour Hoffman's not scary he's a little scary he's a little intense i like him yeah he's a little scary i don't know what was he scary in he was just an in- okay. What is that from? I would say, what is that from? I'm gonna find her. I'm gonna hurt her. Shit! When was he about? Oh, I know. Um, Mission Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Tommy Cruise. <laughs> oh, Tommy. All right, he was scary in that. He was a little scary. Yeah. So, um, Ugh, I loved him. That movie was about them needing to be on the high seas. Yeah. So that nobody could shut them down. Mm-hmm. But these number stations are just being like, yeah, no, we know what radio tower it is. Yeah. But no one's copping to owning it. You know? Yeah. So um, here are a few things that uh, number stations may have evolved into. Uh-huh. Uh, <clears throat> encrypted emails. Yeah. Used frequently. Uh, that makes sense. Traditional radio broadcast, like what I said to you about the North Koreans listening to, yeah. to songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one I loved. Yeah. Steganography. Streganona. Streganography. <laughs> <laughs> the art of making so much pasta that your village is ruined. <laughs> 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 Kim Jong Un is stu- studying Streganonophy. Why do I make so much pasta? <laughs> oh God! I, I'd be willing to to major in Streganonophy or whatever. Yeah, you can pretty much say you American dogs are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it is the uh, the technological uh, uh, tool uh-huh. of embedding text and images mm-hmm. into other images Uh so you can see here in this example uh and i'll put it up on the screen for people if you watch on youtube uh there's an image of two trees Uh hidden in that image Kristen, tell the people what you see (laughs) that's a kitty cat on like a multicolored towel (laughs) yeah like a beach towel (laughs) or bedspread or something that was on wikipedia and i basically fumbled over myself to take a screenshot that's amazing i was almost out of control trying to take this screenshot (laughs) like this terrifying tactic which could embed you know, horrifying information in everyday news sites. That's amazing. That's like this um, tree could be hiding this kitty cat picture. That's like what is it? Uh, like embedding a curse into a picture or something? Isn't yeah, that a thing? Yeah, sure. What? Yeah, wasn't that a thing? I feel like we used to talk about oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're well. What you're talking about is uh-huh. the uh, the radio play we did. Yes, Illuminati Night of the Twisted Men. Right. Uh, there is. Did it have to do with that? Uh, yes, because there is a a thing. That I found online uh-huh. where certain images of demonic possession yeah, yeah, yeah. need yeah. to have a sanctified oh, a border. Yes, that's JPEG border around the image. Otherwise, uh, 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 not safe to look that's at. That's right. I remember. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Look it up, everybody. Yep. And then look up Illuminati Night of the Twisted Men. It was great. Kristen starred. It might be good for this show, actually. It actually, was like yeah, a weird what? horror comedy thing. Yeah. That I wrote, yeah. Kristen starred in, yeah. and uh, our friends Bobby and my wife Allie yeah. also acted in it with us about Kristen being a reporter uh-huh. trying to solve a series of bizarre murders. Yeah, I played the it was dark. Great. I played the dark magister. Can we, um, William? Is Magister Blackwell with us? Ha <laughs> ha! You summoned him. Now reap what you sow. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> what? Protective huh? border. Protective border. I hope you're looking at me through a protective JPEG. <laughs> Otherwise, your soul is already mine. I probably already have it. I don't know. <laughs> Why don't you know? I'll find out. <laughs> Sooner or and later. And you won't. <laughs> <laughs> huh? What does that mean, Magister Blackwell? Good job remembering his name because I forgot it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's important to me. He's only in my head as the Dark Magister. <laughs> Magister Blackwell. Okay. Number stations may also be phone numbers now. You oh, call the mysterious okay. number. And it asks you to put in a code. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, but nobody's really cracked that. Okay. Then there's this. Kristen, have you heard about this? Uh, Last year, 
a bunch of people discovered something on YouTube that they could not understand. There is an account uh-huh. called Web Driver Torso. No, I don't know this. Which uploads, has currently uploaded over 600,000 videos. Uh huh. Some are only a few seconds long. Uh huh. I'm going to play one for you now. Okay. Be careful. You might be terrified. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Describe to the people what you see. Like red and blue blocks of varying size and position on a screen while that's happening. It's already over. It White is White background, over. red, blue triangle, uh, rectangles just blooping yeah. around. Nobody knew what it was. And is it solved? They're thinking modern day number stations on YouTube. The only way you could decode it is with a one-time pad. That's why whatever government put them up there isn't even worried about the public seeing them. Wow. Well, guess what? There was a terrifying organization behind them. Oh, my God. Who? Google. Googie? It, tur- <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that Google has this account, WebDriver Torso, terrifying name yeah. for a very innocuous Why thing. Why torso? Web driver torso. Yeah. Makes you think of a severed torso. Completely. So what? It, what's the purpose of that for Google? It's a test to see if any quality is lost on videos when they're uploaded to YouTube. Oh, okay. Why didn't they make that private? I, I don't know. <laughs> and so, so many people were freaked out about them trying to figure out what the hell this thing yeah. was. Yeah. Just a bizarre, huh. bizarre choice. Okay. All right. Uh, now I'm going to play for you some real uh, number stations very briefly. Okay. Just to, to round out the experience. Yeah, sure. And uh, then we can move on. I'm sorry. Okay. I feel like I'm going far over time. No, nah, I don't know. Right. I've, I'm enjoying it. This is called the Gong Station. Okay. It's a spooky one. It's weird. Is Tommy Maitland going to pop out? All right, Kristen, for, the, for the people out there, describe who Tommy Maitland is. Tommy Maitland is Mike Myers pretending to be a British cheeky monkey as a host of the Gong Show that relaunched this past summer. And it's, like, annoying but also really compelling. It's hard to look away. Will and I watched, like, a lot of episodes one night. I had to ask Will to leave because he was at my house. And I was like, look, I'm really tired. Like, you got to go. And he was like, I just need to finish this episode. And I was like, all right. <laughs> but then, like... <laughs> I need to finish this like, episode. Like, 15 minutes later, he was like, all right, I think I'm done, too. Kristen, I'm just a little busy <laughs> watching Tommy Maitland right now. I can't leave your home when you've asked me to. <laughs> Mike Myers and a ton of prosthetics. So weird. Not exactly the new Austin Powers. No. Um, Not even the new Love Guru. This is Not also better than the Love Guru. Better than the Love Guru for sure. Uh, this is also a very, very uh, sort of I guess popular is a weird word to use, but it's true. Mm-hmm. This is called the buzzer. Okay, it's a Russian number station. This okay. One. Now this one just broadcasts, by the way, all the time. So this crazy. is not one that stops and starts. Yeah. This is always on. You can tune into it now. Today. Yeah, yeah. It's so nuts. Um, I'm not sure if it was this one. There was one where um, apparently, if you're listening to it, it mm-hmm. sounds like static most of the time. Mm-hmm. But the more you listen, you pick up on voices periodically. Uh. Just people in the room and sometimes tapping. Uh huh. And it's people have realized that all those sounds are manually being done. So there's oh. literally somebody sitting. At like a keyboard? Uh-huh. Wow. Which means a secret government yeah. job. Yeah. Where they're to sit in this tower and periodically play a message, but most of the time they're just sitting there. So sometimes you just oh hear the sound God. of them being in the room. Yeah. Like getting them to get themselves a Coke. Yeah. Yes. There were times where people heard like half of a phone conversation. Uh-huh. Um, wow. Oh, it was this. It is this. Um, people heard half of a phone conversation of somebody just saying names. Boris, Roman, Olga, Mikhail, Anna, Larissa, 7427. Well, even that's freaky. Yeah. So wait, that was in the background? Like you're not supposed to hear that, but they happened to? Um, the way that I read it, that was like sometimes you just hear the, that happening in the room. Um, but but then, so it doesn't seem like that's part of the broadcast. It's just happening in the room and the you know microphone or whatever picked it up. It that, seems like that was the impression I'm under. Uh huh. But I, but that seems <laughs> so even just like their off time is ominous weird. and creepy. Yeah, I guess. 
But one of the phone calls, they mentioned brigade operative officer on duty, which is what? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then the last things that I have to say to you is there's evidently some sweet number station swag oh. that you can buy. Huh. Uh, there is a, a, a five CD set uh-huh. of recordings from number stations <laughs> I want that. that you can buy from uh, the Conit Project uh-huh. is what it's called. <laughs> Uh, you can find. I should it. buy that and play it for my yoga class. The, yeah, <laughs> this is so relaxing. Yeah, why the hell not? I found it on on uh, eBay. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It's chock full of crap. Yeah, I'm sure. It doesn't sound very comforting. Of course not. Um. Here. Oh God. so weird you could have this on a five cd set i would love that the probably co- really, this strikes me as something that'd be really expensive that no, was like 40 bucks on oh eBay. really yeah um so yeah that's literally for sale yeah. now you okay. can also you can also listen to everything on youtube yeah yeah and you're not gonna get through it if anybody sits down and listens to the entire conet project right guys i implore you yeah Get it together. <laughs> to seek help? Yeah. Yeah. And then very coincidentally, there's a Kickstarter that was just successfully funded uh-huh. of uh, uh, of a guy who's putting together a book called Shadows of the State. Hmm. It is a coffee table book with information about number stations, uh-huh. um, uh, satellite imagery uh-huh. of some of the radio stations where the broadcasts emanate from. Yeah. Uh, and and other pictures of the sites and information cool. about the broadcast and stuff. That's cool. And that's going to be going on sale, I guess, sometime soon. Yeah. So look out for that. Sweet. Shadows of the state. But this is obviously something that people have been fascinated with for decades and yeah. decades and decades. Yeah. And since some of this information is not usable, right? like the data from the yeah, number stations do? doesn't add up to anything, mm-hmm. people are just kind of – and it doesn't belong to anyone. Yeah. No one claims ownership of it. I guess you can just package so it up and uh, and sell it. Yeah. So, uh, wow. There you go. We may never know the true extent to which number stations were used. I don't think we will. There's a, an abundance of information out there about radio stations and uh-huh. broadcast and, and what frequency they broadcast at, recordings of them. Yeah. But I have to imagine that it's only like the tip of the iceberg. I'm sure. Because who's tuning in? At the random times when, you know, Moscow wants to play a number station at 3.30 in the morning at this certain frequency, the only people are tuning in. Are the people who need to hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I was pumped about this. Yeah. I know uh, way too much. I should also, I I want to throw this out there. Uh, The reason I picked number stations Mm -hmm. is because one of my favorite podcasts, Tell Them Steve Dave, Mm -hmm. years ago did a run of episodes that they called Overkill. Mm-hmm. They were paid by Microsoft yeah. to do a different podcast just for the Zune. Yeah. And they decided to do all paranormal. Yeah, And yeah. I tuned into, tuned into, <laughs> and I downloaded and listened to. You zoomed to, into. I zoomed into. Wow, I didn't, that, I wonder if they did do that. Zoom in. Zoom on in. Probably. Uh, I listened to an episode of theirs about number stations and... Yeah. Well, I loved it. Yeah. So, well, I don't know if to tell you. I just loved I it. I loved it. So I picked number stations and uh, I learned way more. Yeah. <laughs> that's it's crazy stuff. Awesome. Bonkers. Um, I just realized my notes for my thing are in the car. Oh. And I need my notes. Yeah. I think you do. It's a little unprofessional, sure, but I'm a human being, damn it. Okay. Well, why don't we just go to static? Why don't we go to a number station, okay, since you love them so much? Hey. <laughs> So, mine, yes. I want to remind you all at home, I'm just having a conversation with my brother here, okay? I don't know all the facts. There's a big deal. Oh, you're setting it up in case you sound stupid. Yes. Okay. I want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I love couching this. Correct. Yeah. I want to talk about the Kennedy assassination. Oh, Kristen. I know. I made a mistake. And a little bit of the Kennedy curse. Oh, okay. That I'm. That's down easier. With. To- yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm down with the Kennedy curse. So we're not going to be talking magic bullets and stuff so much, right? No. There's a lot of data on that. There's right. a lot. Yeah. Let me give you guys some backstory. Okay, uh, on our podcast and, and what I've gone through this past week. <laughs> so Will had the idea, and he texted me after the last one. Do you want to do conspiracy theories? And I was like, Yeah, I do. Yeah, I did not realize how much research was going to be involved. Because even this, I had to study like a little scientist. <laughs> it, was, it seems like it. They're intense. I guess yeah. that's part of the nature of conspiracy theories is that there's just like 
all this stuff. Yeah. I guess without people have all a lot of, to say. People have a lot to say, but I also wonder if without all of this information, you wouldn't be provoked into having a conspiracy theory. Sure. So maybe that's part of the nature of it, is that it's some weird thing that's all out there that people tend to condense into something that makes sense to them. Yeah, they're sifting through all this stuff yeah, to and derive it, meaning. Yeah. So maybe that's what provokes a conspiracy theory to be born, is a ton of information maybe. that then if you're reading about them and you want to talk about it, you have to sift through. Yeah. So I was like, okay, sweet. I'm going to do Area 51. So I started researching that, and it was again, it was above my head. I, I was like, "This is crazy." Yeah, I don't know. Lot. And then mm. last night we were with our mom, and we were like, "Okay, let's both tell mom what our thing is, just to make sure that we don't have the same topic." I didn't think that we did, but you know, just to make sure. And you said yours, and I said Area Fifty One to mom, and she's like, "Yeah, no." And I was like, "Okay, the other one that I was thinking of, so just in case Will did it, is the Kennedy assassination." And that's when you heard her. She she was like, "Oh." That would be nice. I love them. Yes. So I was like, I love them. What the hell does yeah. that mean? And it's been bothering me <laughs> yeah. for 24 hours. Yep. So and that's I know. that's what it is. And it was no less dense or confusing than Area 51, obviously. Yeah. Only more so. Anything – I don't speak government language very well. It yeah. really like – not only is it confusing, I somewhat black out a little bit. I can't grasp it. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of with you. I don't yeah. know why. So is this the is this curse heavy or or murder heavy? Both. Like the assassination heavy. So what I'm going to do is because there are a million things, and I'm sure it's been talked talked to. Well, I know it's been talked to death, and it's also just really intense. So you know, second shooter theory, sure. grassy knoll, that stuff. I'm basically just picking out some things from within those okay. that were interesting to me that jumped out. All right, I'm down. That with are that. just disparate whatever and then i'll go into the curse all right of the kennedy family because it's interesting to me yeah okay so here are some things that are from assorted government files like there was um there were a ton of files that were declassified about the kennedy assassination in october they didn't really yield much of anything um it was just kind of stuff that you already knew and kind of benign stuff um at Trump had said that he was going to let everything de- be declassified yeah. and that the last minute he changed his mind. Well, yeah, because he pro- probably found out about like the space alien portion. Of it. <laughs> right. Like, well, Do you know that there was part about aliens? No. Okay. Well, I mean, it's I, like guess a I, sentence did. I guess I did. I guess I did in the yeah, sense yeah. that like, of course there is. Right, all right. But um, uh, yeah. But yeah, the last minute he was like, there are some things that could be sensitive to our world now or something so you can't talk about that, which could be true. Yeah. You know? So whatever. It's not even... Do that, you have that's any not conspiracy even theories him. of your own? Uh, like, is there anything that you believe that you know you acknowledge is probably a little outlandish, but you believe it? I mean, not in the conspiracy sense. Like spirituality based things, but not like okay. outer world conspiracy. Not that I can think of. What about you? I have one that what? I've talked about many times, but I still believe to be true. Maybe less true now that Donald Trump is the president. What? I always believed uh-huh. that uh, there is a speech written uh-huh. for every possible crazy thing that may have happened. Yeah. Because the president always has to come out and calm everybody down yeah. ASAP after something goes hog wild nuts. Yeah. So I figured that there was some speech about like, as we all know, hello, my fellow, fellow Americans, by the way, I'm sorry. <laughs> as we all know... The Banshees arrived. <laughs> that portends a great death. We know this, and uh, unfortunately, it was the kind that looks all happy about it. <laughs> I know we're all scared. <laughs> um, but like, I feel like there's a speech for that. I feel like there's a speech about aliens. I feel like there's a speech about... Like, Did you just develop that theory yourself? Uh, yeah. I mean, that kind of makes sense because there's like an obituary written for celebrities who are like in bad shape. Yeah, like, exactly. There's like a there. Well, not now, but like in 2007, there would be like a Britney Spears obituary and a Lindsay mm-hmm. Lohan obituary. Yeah, just bit, in case. You know, yeah, just in case, so that the news organization can just can be run the first it. ones on it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I feel like somewhere there's a speech about being like the Bigfoots came <laughs> and they devoured. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't many of us left. <laughs> Like, I know, I, I just, I feel like that's true. But I also feel like Donald Trump would be like, okay, speech number 92B, the Loch Ness Monster is now my vice president. Maybe they don't give him access to them. Maybe not. You know how they say that they kind of like baby him in some ways and they don't really, you All know. Right, well, that keeps my hope alive. Yeah. I, I, I also honestly... thought that he would just come out and be like, Area 51 is full of ghosts. <laughs> you know, like I thought he would just like drop a bunch of info that's like blowing our minds be like our technology is based on spacecraft i'm not kidding i think that they don't give him access to 
things like that because I actually I hope that's true for multiple reasons. Oh, One me of them too. Is so that I can still believe that. Yeah, no, I'm not kidding. I I don't think that he has. I've got no reason to think that except for who he is. Yeah. I don't think he has access to all the things that presidents usually have access to. Yeah. I really don't. I think that there are smarter people, even if I, even if they're, so even if they're people whose maybe morals or ideals I don't believe in, I think there are smarter people in his administration or in however it works. And there are people who are there when you come in. I, th- I think they don't give him the keys to the castle. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like this whole experience blows a big hole in the idea of the government being really heavily organized. Yeah. You know, I feel like it does deflate a lot of the conspiracy theories that even just the idea that like the government is five steps ahead of everything. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like we were all blindsided in a way that's like not oh. orchestrated in a way that's like just us being like, at literally everybody just mm-hmm. being like, oh, I, well, everything is different now, and we didn't expect that. One hundred percent. But I mean, as it pertains to literal maybe files that aren't necessarily relevant in daily life that he yeah. doesn't have to look at. I don't. I don't think that they're. <laughs> I know. I'm just saying. Really, I think that they are as yeah. dumb as we think. I think there have to be some people who aren't. I hope so. I think there are. And maybe I don't think they're empowered. <laughs> um, no, no, I don't think they're in high positions of power. But yeah. I think there there are some. Um. <laughs> now I'm thinking, are there? Anyway, okay, that's a that's a scary story for another day. Yeah, exactly. That's a chilling tale of a yeah. kind that I don't really want to discuss. No. <laughs> no, that's also part of my self care is not thinking about that too much. I it's know. probably why I don't have any fully formed ideas about it, or I have only optimistic ones. Not so. But not anyway, so. Um, so here are some things that are from either of those um, things that were declassified in October, or it wasn't as made a big as big a thing of, but there were actually some documents that were declassified over the summer. Oh. So these are kind of from both of those that I thought were like suspicious and kind of like, yeah. okay, so what's up here? And also, did you know that most Americans are very doubtful of the story we've been told about um, the JFK assassin- ass- assassination? I think it's only like, thir- I didn't write it down. I think it's only like 13 or 17% of Americans just accept the lone gunman theory. Really? Yeah. Um, what's that website with Nick Silver? 538 or whatever Five, okay nate silver nate yeah. silver um <clears throat> yeah they there was an article i found about it that they did a bunch of polls and everything and like most people don't believe it and it's interesting like the kennedy assassination and everything afterward seemed to be the turning point for america where, where people started to distrust the government like yeah. i'm sure there are people here and there who did already but it was where it really started to breathe like they might not be being honest with us yeah um so here so are the, some things the, the death of innocence yeah yes yeah, yeah. they call it that um, so here are some things that I think are weird that were from the memos. Um, that So two days after Kenny was assassinated, Lee Harvey Oswald was shot by Jack Ruby um, going to court or whatever. Then J. Edgar Hoover drafted a document. What, what? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I was hoping you wouldn't even draw attention to me laughing. What? I don't remember if it was our joke or if it happened on Conan O'Brien's uh-huh. show. Was there a joke about Bananas Jack Ruby? Yes, it is Conan O'Brien. It was Conan? Yeah. All right, thank God that it really exists. Because it does. all I know is that they had a sketch. I thought maybe we just came up with it because we came yeah. up with many things. About Bananas Jack Ruby, which is the day Lee Harvey Oswald was killed. But it was, instead of Jack Ruby, it was Bananas Jack Ruby who showed up with a banana instead of a gun. And he goes, hey, Oswald. <laughs> and then so funny. mushes the banana into his tummy and it kills him. So... That's me. sorry. So I started thinking good. about bananas, Jack Ruby, and I lost control. I just thought you have to give that a Google, guys. It's great. So um, he drafted a memo to the FBI because they sent some agents saying that um, we need to convince the public that Oswald did this. So we sent agents to wow. his. I mean, that's for real. So they sent agents to his hospital, to his deathbed, hoping that he would have a deathbed confession so that they could say to the public, look, he said he did this. Like, believe us. And just the wording of it is very weird. There were two different wordings of it. I only wrote down one, but both of them said convince the public. Can I make a counter argument? Sure. That could mean Mm -hmm. in the in the aftermath of the president being assassinated which is insane you could just say assure the public yes yes completely to to quell the widespread Mm -hmm. panic yeah 
of conspiracy of you know like somebody an outside governmental agency making mm-hmm. an attack on the u.s president well here's the but the thing is that wasn't a thing yet you know what i mean it was two days after he was killed so there wasn't any real oh, talk you, about I'm that sure yet. within 48 hours you know i know it was a different age but i, don't I have think... to imagine that there were some people being like this was something like, i'm sure there were some people but i wouldn't well, maybe I'm wrong. I wouldn't think it'd be as widespread. Yeah, I, I feel like it got really crazy with like the Z- Zapruder film. Sure. That's the person who was filming it, so that's named after them, where you can see it happen. I feel like when that got released and you could really dig into it and take yeah. it apart and everything, I wouldn't think within two days. I'm sure there were some doubters, but I would think it would just be shock. Yeah, that is fast. It's strange. Yeah. Um, And then another weird thing that's a fact, and also something about the fact I find very interesting, there was a British newspaper that received a call 25 minutes before Kennedy was shot saying that there was going to be big news in the U.S. and they might want to call the embassy to find out what it is. Right. And something that I find really interesting about that, just in the greater scheme of conspiracy theory digging and everything, is that – so that information was released as a fact in the memos or whatever – or not – whatever, the files that were declassified. But that was actually previously re- reported by a Kennedy conspiracy theorist in the 80s who just did digging and stuff. Wow. And that people probably thought were nuts on a million different fronts yeah. and did say something nuts, I'll say in a second. But like – It's some, true. It's something true. big is going to happen. Call right. the American embassy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean that could also – the the thing, I guess, this is just my nature. I'm, I'm just saying weird things, by the way. No, I'm not no, even I'm saying like you. what you I'm know, with it you, means. And I, and I yeah. love them. Yeah. But it's the, it's so the thing that like reflexively I just go like – think about how many things must happen on a daily basis mm-hmm. that you might want to call the American embassy about. Like I'm sure there's constant information happening yeah, back but and forth nonstop. Yeah, but that seems like a big coincidence. 25 minutes before they say there's g- something big going to happen? Like that's so weird. Yeah, but wh- who was the person? Why'd they know with 25 minutes to go? I don't know. You know, that means that Lee Harvey Oswald was like mm-hmm. – at the latest, he was like climbing the steps. Yeah, you know, I don't know, like that's crazy. Well, that's the thing. I mean, people don't. A lot of people don't think that he acted alone. You know what I mean? True. So it was like somebody else who was cahootsing. Yeah. Um. So the other crazy thing, this guy's name was Michael Eddowes. So he also, or maybe not also, I guess it's just part of it. He had a theory that a Soviet imposter took Oswald's identity, and so it was a Soviet imposter who killed. Um, JFK, and they ended up exhuming Oswald's body. Wow! To check, and the casket had some damage to it, so he was like super decomposed. But they were a- and like gross. But they were able to get some body material to yeah. test, and it was him. Shocking. Yeah, I know. That's pretty amazing. But though. there is a lot of really <clears throat> weird stuff, which again, I can't, I can't get into it. Number one, because I don't fully understand it. Yeah. Number two, it's too detailed and just too crazy. It's too much stuff. Yeah. There is a lot of stuff about him. So it seemed. I mean, I think it was true. He was a communist sympathizer, and so it seemed like he had some contact with Russians, okay. some contact with the Cuban government. Like there is definite Something actual to it. and like literal, like actual credence to the theory that he had some sort of contacts. The yeah. thing where I think it starts to get a little nuts is whether he was like hired and employed by other countries or other governments. But, um, so that's crazy. And then the other thing that I thought was interesting, and this is a rumor, but it, it's a rumor that makes a lot of sense is that there there's a lot of speculation that the CIA was kind of in bed with the mafia in um, talks to get them mafia mafia hitman to help them assassinate Castro. So the person or the people who they were talking to were kind of like Chicago mafia, including Sam Giancana and Sam Giancana um, employed Jack Ruby who killed Oswald. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. So kind of weird. Yeah. So that is all the factual, well, you know, factual or like kind of factual stuff that I'm going to talk about. Okay. Now I'm going to get into some crazy theories. Love it. Just random theories. Can't wait. And then I'm going to talk about the curse a little bit. Okay. Stop looking at my paper. Okay. Can't read your chicken scratch anyway. (laughs) I do have bad handwriting. Okay. So one theory is that the driver did it. Apparently in this Pruder film, which I I know I've seen at some point in my life, but I didn't watch it because I didn't want to. I don't want to watch um, it. Yeah. <clears throat> I've seen clips of it. Yeah, because it's unavoidable. Yeah. but I don't want to like sit and look at it. Same. Yeah, same deal. I don't even think I've ever like sat and watched it. I think just it's iconic, like images from it. There was so. a period of time when I was a kid that I thought I don't know if I literally thought it was illegal, but mm-hmm. I thought there was no chance that 
it was possible mm-hmm. that you would ever be allowed to see a real dead body on film. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's like in in a documentary or a photograph. Mm-hmm. If I ever saw a photo of somebody who appeared dead, I was like, oh, that's obviously a recreation because nobody yeah. would ever take a picture of a dead body it seems, and put it somewhere the public could see it. I mean, I get that. It doesn't seem right. Uh, yeah, I don't – yeah. Yeah, I get that. One of the number stations, the cover art for it uh-huh. was a little girl. And I was like, oh, okay, like it's spooky. Uh-huh. And then I was reading the comments and they were like, yeah, she was killed by shrapnel. And I'm like, why, why would you put this as the cover of a YouTube video? It was a live – an alive girl? No. Oh, I don't understand. Like, I really thought that it was like yeah. something that nobody would ever do. Nobody would ever put photos like of a dead person somewhere the public could just see it. Profane. It is. Yeah, I feel it's like there's like I feel like yeah. it's not right to look no. at a dead person. No, in a weird way. No, I yeah. I feel that way too. Yeah. Um. So anyway, yeah. So I haven't really seen it. I've seen you know I can think of images from it or whatever. In research, and I found out more about it than I wanted to, kind of. So I'm not even going to say it. Just kind of like the nitty gritty of like how things went down and everything. It's like yeah. really upsetting. Yeah. But so um, one of the theories from the Zapruder film is that the driver did it, that he turned around and shot him. Yeah. Um, because I guess there's just like some weird movement that the driver makes that you could construe that way, but like no. Um, another one that I've heard before is that he was accidentally shot by a secret service agent because the car stopped short. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of like in the confusion triggered it. Um, and I think another theory around that is that a secret service agent was trying to shoot back at whoever was doing it and he was the one who actually oh. shot him by accident. Wow. Um, I found that from a different source, so I didn't write that down. Do you know about the Umbrella Man? In concept, I think. Okay. I'm really familiar with, like, I don't know much about the JFK I didn't either. I've yeah. never seen the movie JFK. I haven't either. Maybe I really want to watch it. I only know about it because of the spitter from Seinfeld. Yep. There's Somebody's, a second spitter. There's a second spitter who spit yeah. on Kramer. Kramer. Yeah. And it wasn't, it was just, he thought it was Keith Hernandez <laughs> <laughs> with Magic Loogie. I love that episode. We had the on tape. I remember watching that so much. I remember watching Jerry moving around Kramer and Newman to yeah. to talk about ricocheting loogies. Yeah. But I always hated the Keith Hernandez episodes. It was a two-parter yeah. with a baseball player who was a bad actor. He's so bad. Who I didn't no, I care about. Fine. I did not like the Keith Hernandez episode. I was, I was... I was more than happy to watch the JFK moment. Oh, yeah. Where Newman... <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Jerry's manipulating Newman's body. And at one point... <laughs> like Newman posing like, him. Uh, like clunks like a mannequin yeah. whatever oh it's so good it's so good we had that and then uh the crazy joe davola episode where he's pagliacci <laughs> <laughs> which i genuinely wonder if it fed into my clown problems maybe yeah. anyway so um so okay so the umbrella man this is so weird but also very interesting okay because a lot of people took this this um idea very seriously and so it became kind of like a psychological example of how you could take something benign but then if you project sinister ideas onto it you can kind of you you see them yeah basically um so the umbrella man was this guy who showed up for the motorcade and <laughs> was carrying a black umbrella because he was mocking kennedy because his dad supported chamberlain who had a trademark black black umbrella so this guy brought a black umbrella that is such a leap that like kennedy would be like huh is he referencing chamberlain who my dad had ties to like what? who's that and so he's just like doing weird stuff with the umbrella. So people thought that that was like, yes. So people, <laughs> yeah. So people thought that that was him maybe signaling some sort of code oh. to the shooter. Yeah. They didn't realize he was just a nerd. A dork. A loser. Supremo. Yeah. So they either thought. See anything you like, Kennedy? <laughs> with his little parasol. So weird. Shut so up. I either thought it was a signal to the shooter or that it was like an umbrella gun like the penguin. Right. Um, Maybe so. he was also wiping people's memories, <laughs> twirling it, <laughs> and had a spiral I on top. The penguin and that's why that. no one knows that he did it. <laughs> Just asinine. There's so much crazy stuff. I know. There's a theory that Jackie Kennedy killed him. Yeah, I didn't even include that because I find it offensive. It is offensive. What a horrible thing. It's horrible. It was literally in this list, and I was like, nope. And outlandishly stupid. Yeah. There's, if you were going to try to. There's no. What was the reasoning behind it? I don't even remember. If you were going to try to. Because he was sleeping around. Oh, right. If right. you were going to try to kill the most mm-hmm. powerful person on the planet. Yeah. 
Would you pick a parade where hundreds of people are staring and right you're at in, us? you're in a convertible where everybody can see you? Come on. I mean, I guess the conspiracy theory argument would be like, yeah, no better place. Who would suspect? I know. But come on, you dingbat. I know. I know. It's ridiculous. Um, and then on the flip side of that, the Jackie thing kind of is that it was Joe DiMaggio who put a hit out because JFK had a hit out and killed Marilyn, who's Joe DiMaggio's ex-wife. Wow. Elaborate. Now, Joe DiMaggio dunks his donut. That's right. We've seen it. Kramer well, we haven't saw seen it. it. Yeah. At Dinky Donuts. That's right. And what he, does it mean? Though he tried to get his attention by banging and yipping. <laughs> I was going to do it. I'm just being like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More Seinfeld connections. It's <laughs> so me means... looking down at the table and, and hesitating, like, should I do this now? Yeah. Read my lips. It means something. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, that Freemasons orchestrated it. Oh, okay. Lyndon Johnson was part of the Freemasons. Mm. Get him in the presidency. Um, <laughs> this one is so dumb, yeah. but like, no, it's just straight up dumb, but like, sure. Refined sugar is bad for you. We all know that, right? Yeah. You know, refined sugar is bad for you. Okay. Um, that <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald did it because of a, because of psycho psychological complications of being addicted to refined sugar. I think I heard this. <laughs> um, because he had a Coke right after. <laughs> Oh my God! Is that why? I'm trying. To, you know what? I wrote. What is it with the Coke? Does he, is he drinking it when he's going to the co- the courthouse? He's seen with a Coke. I can't remember what the yeah, deal is. That yeah, that is yeah, yeah. crazy. Yes, and he was hooked on cokes, and maybe the refined sugar really got to his head. He also wore like a like a nice white Hanes <laughs> T-shirt. Yeah. Maybe it was that. Maybe fruit. Maybe there was too much I fruit mean, in his loom. Sugar is terrible. And he lost it. Sugar is terrible for you, but I don't think it did that. No. And then here's the UFO one that um, Kennedy had asked to see confidential UFO documents 10 days before he was killed. So the theory with that one is that he was killed by the government to keep him from getting into all that stuff and stirring up trouble. Yeah. Is that even the best way to go about it? (laughs) No. You know what I mean? Like, it's like he asked about UFOs. So they're like. Well, the heat's on. We got only one way out, boys. <laughs> we got to kill him in front yeah. of a ton of people. Uh, yeah. I don't, what do you believe? I believe that Lee Harvey Oswald was into some communist stuff. Okay. I think I do think it's not impossible that he was somehow in bed with some other government from another country. I really do think that could be. Yeah. I think the conspiracy theory that makes the most sense. It's not even just like. I don't know if you'd call it a conspiracy theory exactly. I think that the CIA, from what I read, I didn't say it just now, but you can look it up. I think the CIA was very aware of Lee Harvey Oswald and didn't take it seriously. And so the things that they're covering up or redacting are covering their own tuchuses oh. because they should have done something about it. Okay. So like, there's one thing from the um, the files that were just released in October – where it's almost like a cliffhanger in a movie. Like it's this questioning thing. And I don't even remember the context of it, but somebody is like now was, Oh wait, I think maybe I'm getting mixed up. It was either like, was the CIA aware of Lee Harvey Oswald's activities redacted? Oh, it was either that, or it was like, did we find that Lee Harvey Oswald was an operative for another country redacted? Like it was something that was like a big deal and they kept away the answer. Um, so that's what I think. I think that it's not impossible actually that he was some sort of spy. Or do you think he acted alone? Like mechanically at the on the day? I don't know. Okay. I think so. I don't know. To tell you the truth, I don't even remember. I, I couldn't even uh, I don't know good, enough. About I couldn't the mechanics give a good answer it. because it's so know. confusing yeah. to me. I'm not sure. But I do think I do think that the government knew a lot more about it and yeah. at, at best just ignored it because they didn't take it seriously. Yeah. At worst, and I don't even know why they would, like there were reasons that, again, I'm too dumb to explain, uh, that they would let it happen because it served their purposes to have Kennedy gone. See, I guess the weird thing is like I've heard about this event my whole life. Yeah. I've done no independent research into it. I do not know much about it. It's so confusing. The thing that always fascinated me, and I Mm -hmm. remember I asked mom and dad this constantly growing Mm -hmm. up because it just – I found it – yeah, kind of fascinating mm-hmm. that uh, it was always, always this myth, not a myth. It was mm-hmm. like a mythical thing, I mm-hmm. guess I should say, 
that everybody remembered where they yeah, were when it yeah. happened. Uh-huh. That it almost froze time. Yeah, completely. And so I remember I definitely asked mom and dad mm-hmm. multiple mucho times. Mucho, mucho. Where were you when it happened? Because yeah. I liked hearing them yeah. be able to pinpoint like everything is so there's there's now me being like a a, a little armchair philosopher mm-hmm. sitting right here mm-hmm. but like i guess it's like you know it, it's it's so hard to hold on to any memory yeah Every, you know like constantly you're being like oh my gosh it's the end of the year it's yeah. the end of 2017 what's going on yeah the idea that you can ever be like this is when it happened. Right. This is what it was. This is where I was. This is what I was looking at. This is who told me. Mm-hmm. I find that fascinating. Yeah. That it's just uh, engraved in your mind. It is. And it then, completely and is. And then we had our own time. Yeah. Where you remember exactly where you were. Mm-hmm. And I still find it fascinating, but I don't like thinking about it. No. So I wonder, I don't know. It's just one of those things. Mm-hmm. It's just odd that you can be that sort of like stuck. Yeah. Your memory kind of calcified Mm -hmm. in a place that, yeah. I think when something's such a a huge, humongous deal like that, maybe, you know, like that really shook everything at that time, you know what I mean? And, you know, 9 11 shook everything for us. So I think it's just like earth earth shaking. It changes everything. It's interesting. Um, So then the Kennedy curse, the Kennedys have, (laughs) their family has had an extremely large number of crazy and bad things happened to them. Yeah. So I'm just going to read you from the Wikipedia. Um, I thought about looking up like reasons why or whatever, but I was like, no, nah, it's gross. These are real people. And I yeah. really want to read people's weird theories about like, yeah, that's I don't know, fair. something like cuckoo. But one thing I did read that made kind of sense was that. So Joseph senior Kennedy, um seemed like a real like and he was a politician he like really really pushed the kids he was like a really um overbearing yeah overbearing and so maybe that just caused personality things with some of the things that happened that maybe had ripple effects that caused things to happen um so the first one basically it's in chronological order um is about rosemary kennedy so they're like a bunch of kennedy kids i don't remember how many um in their family rosemary kennedy was when she was being born, the doctor was running late and the nurse, even though she could have delivered her was like, why don't you like hold her in until the doctor gets here? So she was in the birth canal oh my for God. two hours before she got delivered and it cut off oxygen to her brain. Oh my God. Yeah. So she was born and everything and she was okay, but she was pretty mentally or uh, not even mentally disabled, I guess. I don't know. Uh, like intellectually disabled. Like yeah. when she was like a teenager, she had an IQ test and she had the IQ of like an eight to 10 year old. Oh. But then when she was going through puberty and everything, she started getting like kind of wild. Okay. And papa kennedy decided she would get one of these new things called a lobotomy i think i knew this yeah okay yeah it's actually that show lore that's based on a podcast yeah. they have an episode that's about um what are they called frontal lobotomies or frontal lobe lobotomies where they go through your eye yeah she didn't get that but um they talk about rosemary kennedy in that episode so i just heard that but so she got this lobotomy and it screwed everything up and yeah. then she couldn't walk and she couldn't talk and it was devastating and horrible so that's one. God. Um, this then, is this is really not cool, mm-hmm. but it reminded me, and mm-hmm. I wonder if it was an influence in any way. Mm-hmm. I feel like such a jerk saying this. Uh, the Dumbledore family. Oh, interesting. Right? In Harry Potter, yeah. spoiler alert for the end of Harry Potter, basically, uh-huh. it's revealed Dumbledore's past. Huh. He had a young sister yeah. who had some form of ailment that we still do not seem to understand, Yeah, where she was incapable of taking care of herself. She was basically a little kid still. Yeah. Huh. And, uh, and Dumbledore was like the president. Yeah. And uh, and the JFK, the Kennedys, it was Camelot. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Like that was, the, that yeah. was the, the name for them. It was yeah. like the modern American royalty. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess that's not that's not a solid line, but anyway, I just thought of that. no, that is interesting. Um, and then Joseph Kennedy Jr. died in a plane crash during World War II. Mm. Then I think it was his in laws, if I remember correctly, um, died in a plane crash. Wow. Planes and Kennedys are like real bad news. Um, then. Jackie had a son. Well, J- Jackie and JFK had a son who died um, as an infant two days after his premature birth, Ooh. which I didn't know. Then JFK was shot. Then 
Ted Kennedy was involved in a plane crash where one of his aides and the pilots were killed, and he spent a long time recovering. What's going on? I guess statistically, it's, when you are when there are a million Kennedys, but you know what? It doesn't even happen to a million. If you think about it, it's not that many people I guess for this. It, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's the thing. Because I was reading about this and people were like, well, you know, it's when it's a really widespread family. But it's only happening to like, I don't know, five of them? Yeah. I, uh, wow, that's, that's wild. Yeah. Then Robert Kennedy was assassinated. Right. Then Ted Kennedy dro- drove his car off a bridge and it went into the water. He got out. But his companion who was in the car, like his girlfriend or something, was trapped. And he left the scene and didn't report it for 10 hours. And what? It's, it's a wild story. That's right. horrific. And then Ted stated that on the night of the incident, he wondered whether some awful curse did actually hang over all the Kennedys. Then. Was I uh, driven to do this by a uh, curse? Or is it my fault? Could I uh, perhaps get out of it this way? <laughs> A demon named Belial uh, oh, God. has been haunting me my uh, whole life. Uh, <laughs> I'm a lifer. Uh. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, then. Now, so I'm going to start to lose the thread of who these people are, but they're Kennedys. Okay. okay, okay. I'm not sure we're in the chronology Is there. Is there a John Boy? John Boy? I don't think so. All right. Um, then. John John. Oh, yeah. John John. Yeah, John yeah, John, yeah. yeah. Okay, then Joseph Kennedy the second. Um, was the driver of a Jeep that crashed and left the passenger paralyzed. David Kennedy died of a cocaine overdose. God. William Kennedy was arrested and charged with the rape of a young woman at the Kennedy estate. Oh. Um, Michael Lemoyne Kennedy died in a skiing accident. John John JFK Jr. died when the plane that he was um, piloting crashed into the Atlantic and it killed him, his wife, and his sister-in-law. Oh. Um, Kara Kennedy died of a heart attack in D.C. How old was she, though? Uh, it said that she... I'm not sure. She reportedly... It's weird. It's, it's like... She reportedly suffered from, from lung cancer nine years earlier, but she had recovered after removal of part of her right lung. These Are these sure. all in a section called the Kennedy Curse? Yeah. You can't call one of the Kennedys I, yeah. raping someone part of the Kennedy curse. I agree. Yeah, I, ju- I didn't even think about that. I'm that just really, reading That really down. is crazy. Like, we just that joked about him not reporting it for 10 hours or whatever, but this other Kennedy, yeah. that's not part of the Kennedy curse, man. Well, you know what's weird? Th- that they left out of the Kennedy curse then? I can't remember his name right now, so sorry, guys. JFK. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's really weird that's in there. There's another Kennedy by, like, marriage or something who raped and killed a woman in Connecticut. It's like a really famous case. God. Um... What's and up then, with the Kennedys? I don't, I don't know. And then Mary Richardson Kennedy committed suicide on the grounds of her home in Westchester, New York. Who? Oh. And that was in 2000, uh, 2012. That was the last one. That's a lot. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, the last one so far. This is crazy. I know. Isn't that insane? That really is bonkers. Yeah. That's a lot. A lot, a lot. Again, I wouldn't so, call it all the curse. I'd call it like the Kennedy bad stuff. Yeah. Because you got to include it all. Yeah. But like... Some of this is just like people being horrible. I about to say, I don't know if the things I guess I guess we're getting into curse nitpicking. Yeah. I guess the things that just happened to people, sure, if we're gonna talk about a Kennedy curse. Right. But like not really Ted Kennedy driving off the side of a bridge or, yeah. or those two guys raping someone. Yeah. That's not part of the curse. It's horrible. Yeah. I uh, um, got caught stealing a Moz bar. Yeah, I guess the Kennedy curse strikes again. <laughs> How did they catch me so fast? <laughs> There was a fella twirling an umbrella, and I, <laughs> all I wanted was some sweet to chocolate bar. <laughs> How could this happen to a boy like me? Seventy-year-old <laughs> yeah. Ted Kennedy is a weirdo that's again. Right. <laughs> Once again, so yeah, that's Kennedy stuff. God, wow. That's just a potpourri of Kennedy stuff. I, I, I'm not even. I don't even know what to say. I know. I'm almost just caught speechless by this. I know. This is madness. It's crazy. This family has suffered a lot of misfortune. If you're a Kennedy, and then done bad things. Don't ride in a plane or drive a car. No, just stay put. You probably just, have a mansion. Just sit still and wait for it to all be over. Yeah. <laughs> if you're born a Kennedy, right? Just sit and wait eighty years. Who's got eyes on Maria Shriver? Oh my. Maria Shriver's a Kennedy. Arnold Schwarzenegger's wife? Ex-wife, but yes. She's a Kennedy? Yeah, like by marriage or something Maria like that. Maria Kennedy? 
No, Maria Shriver. <laughs> As I said. Well, yeah, but... But, like... Um, oh, well, yeah, his name is not like Shriver. A, I was thinking ma- a maiden name or something like that, but... You think it's Arnold Shriver. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think it's, like, a cousin by marriage or something. Wow. Yeah. Actually, I have eyes on Maria Shriver. Ryan and I turned on the TV the other day, and it was Dr. Oz with Maria Shriver on, and she was learning about blueberries. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Because <laughs> I remember being like, "What is this?" <laughs> now, now, doctor, what are these? It was like about like antioxidant and rich foods or something. And she was like, "You know what?" I started They're blueberries, <laughs> and like a, they had like a panel of doctors, and one of them was talking about blueberries. And she was like, "You know what? I've been making smoothies every night now, so that's how I get all these things in." And Doctor Oz is like, "You know, that's a great idea." And I was like, "Are we acting like making a smoothie is a new idea? Like, what is this show?" God. Now, I've been drinking a lot of smoothies lately, so I uh, use a lot of, uh, well, these. What are these little round things? I don't know what the heck they are, but they sure are delicious. (laughs) I don't know what you call these things, but I sure do like them, Doctor. (laughs) And I was like, what is Maria Shriver doing here? My doctor has the the strangest little fruits. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So she's okay. She's okay. She's chock full of antioxidants with all those smoothies. Learning about blueberries. <laughs> well, then she's fine. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So she's the only safe Kennedy. Right. Keep right. eating them blueberries, Maria. Hit those bloobs, babe. <laughs> uh, can we play the cool. bloober reel? It's a it's a video of Maria Shriver eating blueberries. <laughs> um, all right. I think that's going to do it for My us. My God. I'm is sorry. it gonna do it for you? It really, like this entirely? Is the end of me. Yes, yeah. I'm I'm Kaputsky. Yeah. Um so that's it. That's it. There is, what else do you want? It's our up, <laughs> uplifting show. What else could you possibly need? <laughs> uh thank you guys so much for tuning in. Yep, thank we, you. We hope that you enjoyed the show. Yep. Uh please, for the love of God. Help us. Yes, get out there. <laughs> start telling people about the show. Yeah. Oh, we beg of you. Please. Uh, we're not that desperate. It would just be really nice. Yeah, I would go, love that. Go leave us a, an Apple Podcast yep. review. Mm-hmm. Uh, share the show with your friends on Stitcher or whatever. Mm-hmm. Whatever uh, you got. Thumbs up the YouTube video. I think mm-hmm. I might just start uploading these as little clips. Sure. Yeah. Uh, 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 and let us know what you think about the show. We yeah. greatly appreciate that, yeah. you guys. Totally. Uh, and just talk to us about whatever because yeah. it's fun. I had a blast. But don't this. correct me on any Kennedy information. Don't at me. We don't want to hear it. We want to hear fun stuff. It's too complicated, so don't uh, uh, actually. Yeah. I, I can't. I'm not that smart. You so can be, add be nice to, to me. Feel bad for me. You can add to it. Be like, here's another crazy thing. But yeah. don't be like, uh, Kennedy's still alive. Yeah, I can't. He lives with Elvis. <laughs> and Andy Kaufman. And Andy Kaufman. Uh, but yeah, feel free to add yeah. on to that stuff. We love to hear it. Yeah. Uh, hit us up on Twitter mm-hmm. and Facebook and Instagram where we are at gttu pod yep and you can also speak to us individually mm-hmm. i'm at chillin Kristen on instagram and twitter i'm at haunted sponge make sure you like our facebook page yep. keep up to date with what we're working on get we have the a facebook, facebook group yeah that's right mm-hmm. uh uh talk about spooky stuff in there uh even spooky movies whatever you want it doesn't yeah. have to be spooky yeah um but yeah we hope you guys had a good time i had a blast doing this this me was super too fun. i really enjoyed this me one. too uh and we will see you next week for another new episode of guide to the unknown but yep. until then we must travel back to the netherworld go we Back to the netherworld, go we. Hey, uh, huh. <laughs> See you soon. Goodbye. See you real soon. Sooner than I think. <laughs> I'm the magister. <laughs> it's nice to meet me. <laughs> it's nice for you to meet me. <laughs> <laughs>